Yo, what's going on, Stepper? So today I'd like to share with you five things I wish I understood before beginning my wholesale real estate investing journey and efforts for it to help you out, whether you're on your journey already or you're just starting to think about wholesaling real estate. You wanna know if it's right for you. Now, five things I wish I understood. The first thing I wish I understood is simply that you've probably more than most likely already have tried to wholesale something before. Either you've tried to or you probably already have. Think about it like this. Wholesaling is nothing more than taking something from somebody else at a lower price and then selling it at a higher price. So I think we've all more than most likely, if you tuned into the channel, then you're a real hustler. So that being said, you've probably noticed opportunities, whether it was a bag of chips that you bought for 50 cents and you turned around and sell it to somebody else for 75 cents, supply and demand, or maybe it was a pair of shoes that you got tired of wearing and instead of you just giving it away, you sold it to somebody else. Either that or maybe you had, you know, anything, guys. It's so many different things that you can wholesale and that you've probably already wholesale. The reason I'm bringing this up is because at the beginning of my real estate investing wholesaling career, if I would have understood that I've already wholesaled before, it would have took away a little bit of the anxiety or a little bit of the doubtfulness that I had of like, dang, does this actually work? Can I actually do this? Will somebody actually sell me something for lower than the market value? I'm sure you've been in situations where someone has sold you something for lower than the market value because what? Just like your shoes, you were tired of them. You were tired of the shoes, so instead of you just giving it away, instead of them just letting property taxes build up and just not taking care of the property, they decide to sell it to somebody else for a lower price. It's the same ideology, guys. Like When you take the basic premise, the basic idea, you can apply it with anywhere, including real estate. Wholesaling is something that people do on a daily basis. Real estate wholesaling is just a specific niche within a wholesale realm. Now, that understanding that faithfully will give you guys more confidence, okay? Now, another thing, when you begin this wholesale real estate journey, you have to realize that it's that, it's just that. You're starting wholesale real estate, right? And that means that wholesale real estate, and this is something that, like, my personal opinion, but again, I've been wholesaling real estate for four years, um, three years full-time, and four years all together. And if you'd like to learn more about my journey, click that link up there. But what I'm explaining to you guys today is that wholesale real estate is not a lifelong career. It's not. It's not a lifelong career, guys. If you're thinking about wholesale real estate, like, if you're looking at, like, I dang, I, I can't wait to do wholesale real estate for the next 50 years of my life or 40 years of my life. I don't think anybody begins wholesale real estate with the idea that they want to do this for the next 50 years. But I do think everyone begins, and not everybody, but if you don't have an end goal in mind, then you can just think about wholesale real estate as the destination. Like, okay, I'm wholesaling. Great, I'm wholesaling. But eventually on your journey of success through wholesaling real estate, you will figure out and you will feel like, man, what's next? This is actually kind of a rat race within itself. Learn how to escape the wholesale real estate rat race up there. But learning that you are in a situation where this is the beginning level of an entire real estate investing career. It's not to say that wholesale real estate is a bad thing, no. Because the good thing is, with it being the beginning level, it's also the foundation, right? So think about the biggest flippers, right? People that are flipping houses, or people that are renting, has a, a huge rental portfolio. What do they have in common with wholesalers, and what do they have in common with each other? Everybody, all three of those people have in common that they want to get the deal at the lowest price possible. Once you guys understand that, then you will realize that as a person already wholesaling real estate, then you're already ahead of the game. You're already ahead of other people because they are coming to you for the deal. The only thing that more than most likely why you started wholesaling real estate is because you do not have the capital to buy the property up front, which is why you have to build up the capital knowing that this is not an end goal, that there's other levels to this, you begin it by wholesaling it, going directly to the seller. So now at the end of it, when you're flipping and when you're buying and building your rental portfolio, guess what? You also have your foundation set to where now you don't have to go to somebody else to find the deal. You don't have to go to somebody else to find a lower price property. Now you can just buy the property from yourself. You understand what I'm saying? You can buy the property from yourself. Now this is something that came to me within I would say about a year and a half of wholesaling real estate full time. Again, there was about nine months where it took me to get that first deal. So I've been doing this for four years, but three years full time. That being said, about a year and a half in, I realized like, wait a minute, I can actually go to the point, I can grow to the point where I'm at the base and I'm buying the deals myself because what I noticed is over that year, 
a property that I sold for $50,000, somebody went in and didn't do anything to it and sold it for $70,000. Nothing changed except for the timing of it, right? So if you're able to buy it and hold it and either sell it, do a hotel, whatever you want to do with it, you're in the powerful position. So realize that wholesaling real estate is the foundation. Not only is it the beginning, but it's the foundation of entire real estate investing enterprise, okay? Now, number three, and this one is really huge, especially for anybody out there that's like me. Now, if you like me, once you figure out something that can change your life, that is life changing, you wanna share it with the world, okay? You wanna share it with everybody. This is why I'm here with you right here with the camera, you feel me? But that being said, more than most likely, you will first begin by sharing it with people in your personal life. You're gonna tell them, hey, have you heard about wholesaling real estate? You can become a millionaire by not even, you know, touching a property. You can become financial independent, da da da. You will tell them everything about wholesaling real estate. They're gonna be very excited. You may even think that they're going to start wholesaling real estate. They may even think that they're going to start wholesaling real estate. They may even start wholesaling real estate, right? But they are not you. And it's very important for you to understand that because what the number three is, is you cannot motivate people into action, right? It's part of the reason why I started my YouTube channel. I wanted to be able to motivate people through a camera because if you motivate somebody in person and they do not take action, it can be very deflating, not only for them, but for yourself as well. You begin to feel like, why am I even sharing this with people if all they're going to do is let it go in one ear and out the other? So you as a stepper on your journey of success, realize that you cannot waste your energy and time, but more importantly, your energy, investing it into others if they're not going to invest it into themselves. Now, the reason why I started a YouTube channel is because you as a stepper watching this, more than most likely, well, actually, just by watching this, you're investing it into yourself, right? You're investing time into learning something. So you're investing into yourself. Now, what will happen if you're a person that's wholesaling real estate and people know you and you're excited, you're telling them about it, you will find that some people, they're not as self-driven as you, right? So instead of them like you right now watching this, they'll be like, hey, man, what should I know before I start wholesaling real estate? They'll ask you which is okay, right? Because if they're actually on their journey, you you share, right? Share all, everything. Because investing into people, it's, it's a limitless return, right? Unlimited. That being said though, if you're investing into people and you notice that this person is just asking you questions that they can just Google, don't waste your time and energy. Stop it right then and there because it'll only end up with a relationship that is battered, okay? And you don't want to have any relationship that's battered over something that's good. Wholesale real estate is a great opportunity. Do not, do not like drown that opportunity out by putting so much energy into somebody else and then them not taking action. And then you kind of just end, a little, end up a little bit bitter inside, right? It, and I'm telling you this from experience. Again, in the beginning, if somebody told me, hey, don't waste your time. Don't, don't even, like you can tell people you're wholesaling real estate. If they're interested, you know, tell them a YouTube channel to look up. Don't even talk about it no more else. I spent so much time talking about wholesale real estate to so many people who did not take action. It definitely put, just made me look at a lot of people differently throughout my life experience, okay? So I'm, <laughs> avoid that, avoid it. You take action, that's what you about. You a stepper, you can lead by like people will, they'll take notice of you. They'll take notice of what you're doing. And once you tell them, hey, I'm a wholesaler real estate, if they about it, they'll go up and they'll look into it, okay? Now this leads me into number four, which is very, very important, guys huge in the beginning of my real estate investing journey right i was at before i began to do this full time i was at a jd by rider car dealership cleaning out cars okay that's what i was doing i was very i'm naturally a uh, like an introvert extrovert person i'm naturally don't mind not talking to anybody right <laughs> i like just being out getting out and being by myself and experiencing myself in different environments that's like who i am naturally that being said though on your real estate investing journey it's different because nine times out of 10, you're gonna be at home most of the time, right? You're making your calls, you're doing your marketing. What I'm trying to express to you is that it's a very lonely road, guys. Real estate investing, wholesale real estate is a very lonely road. So what this means for you is that you have to nourish your alliances. Any type of real alliances that you gain, you have to nourish those alliances, guys, because it's a lonely road. Wholesale real estate is a lonely road. That's the only thing I, I mean, I, that's the best way for me to describe it to you. And, and you learn a, a lot about yourself throughout the journey, throughout the process. But at the same time, when you couple the idea of wholesale real estate being a lonely road with what I said before, that you've already tried to motivate people and then for whatever, they just didn't continue to action. 
you can end up with a little bit of resentment and bitterness and a whole bunch of things that I'm working through myself. So that being said, if you in the beginning just understand that you are in a lonely role, you're approaching a lonely position, don't motivate nobody else. Let them do what they got to do, right? But nourish those real alliances. Now, how do you get real alliances, right? How do you get that? This is number five. Number five is that through wholesale real estate, trust is earned. This is how you get those alliances, by people earning your trust and you showing and displaying that you're a genuine person as well, that you're a stepper. So that being said, guys, if you take yourself at number five, realizing that all trust is earned, just because somebody says, hey, I'm buying 10 properties a month, that don't mean you go send them your properties, right? Because at the end of the day, how do you know they actually buy them? You can figure that out if you get their LLC and search and see if they're purchasing in their LLC throughout X amount of time. What I'm explaining to you is don't take their word for it. Say if you even meet another wholesaler, right? And they're telling you, yeah, I got the hugest buyers list. I sell properties all the time, blah, 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 whatever they're saying, right? What you have to do is send them one property. See how they act with that one property. Not only do they, if they get the property sold, but do they communicate with you, right? Do you feel like you in some type of alliance here? Is it a mutually beneficial relationship? Instead of sending them all your properties, and then you realize like, dang, they're like, what are they doing? Like they're not even, you get what I'm saying? If you're in a position where you're sending somebody else a property and you're like, hey, you sell it 50-50 split, but then if you're thinking like, I'm just gonna send them my properties because they're saying that they're about to buy it, but they need an inspection period because they're, people will make up so many excuses, guys. So don't, simply do not trust them. Realize that the trust is earned. Set your process, which your process should never, almost never include giving your buyer an inspection period with you signing off on the dotted line because that puts you in a bind, right? Puts you in a pigeonhole. We don't wanna be in pigeonholes. But that being said, guys, you're gonna come across a lot of wholesalers, contractors, property owners. All these property owners, that will tell you the darnest things, right? They'll tell you that I just had somebody else offer $500,000 for a $100,000 property, right? They're telling you that because they want you to feel like you're missing out on something. So you can jump the gun, maybe tell, tell you that, hey, I don't do inspections. You got to close them out. They will tell you so much stuff. And if you're gullible, if you're thirsty, if you're feeling, you know, like, if you're not confident in your capability and your thought process, you're going to go around believing what anybody tells you. And in this business, in wholesale real estate, it's a dog eat dog world. I mean, that's really, it's a, that's concurrent with a lot of business within itself. People are self-centered. That's just the reality of it. So this is why I go back to number four. It's a lonely road, but nourish your alliances. Once that trust is earned with somebody, then you have to make sure that you nourish that alliance by whatever means that you can, guys. Whatever means that you feel like you would like for somebody to do to you. That's the only thing that you really can do to nourish an alliance when it comes to wholesale real estate. Now, this is very important, guys, and let's take it back from the top. Remember, number one, wholesaling real estate is something, or wholesaling is something that you've probably already done. You've probably already tried to take a, a pencil and sell it to somebody else. You've probably already tried to do these things, right? A shirt, a, you've already wholesaled. So realize that it takes some, some of the burden off. Number two, real estate, wholesale real estate, is not a lifelong career. You can make it as a base, but you wanna naturally elevate. You're gonna naturally elevate, guys. Once you're seeing people, once you see a house that you sold for $50,000, turn around and sell all the MLS for $200,000 a year and a half later, you're like, hold up. I sold it for 50,000. I had it at 35,000. I made $15,000, that's good. But wait a minute, I could've made, I could've made $165,000? Take away $50,000 for rehab, 110, 115,000. You're going to naturally look at that. You're going to naturally elevate. So realize, as you elevate, don't go depend on somebody else for your deals. You realize and stay with that process. Hire other people to make the calls for you. That way now, instead of you selling off all your deals, every six or seven deals, you buy one of them. Number three, you can't motivate people into action. Don't. You'll end up just... Don't, don't do it, okay? And then number four, um, last but not least, it's a lonely road. So nourish your relationships and last, trust is earned, guys. Until next time, as always, get to stepping.